Remember we did a couple of shows on a group of U.S. billionaires, the Rockefeller brothers out of New York, who decided in 2008 that they want to shut down Canada's oil industry? Four years ago, they had a meeting to hammer out their attack. They agreed to spend $7 million a year attacking Canadian energy jobs through lawsuits, political activities, and front groups. It's all a little creepy, a bunch of New York billionaires spending their money to attack the oil industry when they inherited their money from their great-grandpa, John Rockefeller, who made his money in oil. I mean, talk about your daddy issues. But why can't these rich kids spend their money chasing supermodels or crashing Ferraris like other playboys do? Why are they treating Canada, a sovereign country, like some toy? Well, they are. But what really gets sick about it is that they have found no shortage of so-called Canadians willing to take some of that $7 million bucks a year to attack Canada for them. Here's page 12 of the Rockefeller Brothers campaign plan showing their list of hired lobbyists. There's a picture of the logos. Obviously, Greenpeace is on there. They'd take money from anyone. And they're not loyal to Canada. They're based in Europe. But on that list are Canadians willing to sell out their own country for a few bags of that Rockefeller cash, including the Canadian-based Pembina Institute and environmental defense. Now, there's nothing illegal with foreign billionaires hiring local dirty tricksters to attack Canadian jobs. Well, actually, I guess there is something illegal about it, come to think of it. Greenpeace regularly breaks the law by trespassing, vandalizing, break and enter, violating other laws that they don't like. Here, they're breaking out of the Calgary Tower. They also break into refineries, for example, endangering workers. Hey, try doing that in an OPEC country. Anyways, there's nothing illegal about simply denouncing the Canadian oil sands and the jobs that come with it. Our Environment Minister, Peter Kent, and our Natural Resources Minister, Joe Oliver, started calling out these foreign-funded extremist groups about six months ago, pointing out how they're not really grassroots Canadians. They're astroturf, fake grassroots, bought and paid for by the Rockefellers of New York or the Tides Foundation of San Francisco. And in the latest federal budget, the government hired extra auditors at Revenue Canada to make sure none of these political lobbyists are falsely claiming charitable tax status, as some of them clearly are. One example of this is a San Francisco-based extremist group with the ironic name of Forest Ethics. Here's their website. They were on that Rockefeller memo. They're not a science-based charity. They're not a charity at all. They're an anti-Canada lobby group. They pressure companies to boycott Canadian products and services that are affiliated with our oil business. For example, they managed to bully Chiquita Banana to boycott Canada. Obviously not a charity. Not a crime like Greenpeace commits, but not a charity. Yet Forest Ethics has been renting out the charitable number of another extremist charity called Tides Canada. So foreign donors can give money to Tides Canada, get a Canadian charitable receipt, and then the money is passed on tax-free and anonymously to Forest Ethics to attack Canada. That's not charity. That's money laundering, actually. Not that Forest Ethics really needs that charitable tax break. I mean, they've got a direct pipeline into the Rockefellers. Maybe Joe Oliver and Peter Kent will succeed. Maybe the money launderers will be shut down and political lobby groups like Forest Ethics will stop being able to issue the kind of charitable tax receipts that are supposed to be reserved for food banks and orphanages. I think Forest Ethics and Ties are a little bit scared because they begin to scrub their websites of the most political stuff on them. I mean, like this press release put up by Nikki Scoose after last year's federal election, trashing the conservatives and praising the anti-oil sands candidates. That's partisan politics, clearly illegal for charities to do so under the Income Tax Act. This press release has been deleted from Forest Ethics' website. They're trying to cover their tracks now, aren't they? Okay, fine. Let's say Forest Ethics and Tides and all these other groups lose their charitable status. Let's even daydream that one day Forest Ethics is cut off from the Rockefellers. Hey, it won't happen, but just for a moment, just for the sake of argument, let's pretend. Here's the sick part. Here's the news. Even if Forest Ethics loses its counterfeit charitable status, even if its rich foreign sugar daddies in New York cut it off, even if not a single Canadian makes a voluntary donation to Forest Ethics, I mean, why would they? They're based in San Francisco. Why would a Canadian donate to a foreign lobby group? Even then, Forest Ethics is still made in the shade. Why? What's their unstoppable source of money? This might surprise you. Peter Kent. Seriously, you heard me right. The same Peter Kent who has condemned these foreign meddlers, he has even used the word money laundering himself, is their newest sugar daddy. I've got proof. Here's a copy of the signed contract he made with them. Look at that at the top. The Minister of the Environment cut a deal with Forest Ethics, a San Francisco-based extremist group that has its money laundered by the Tides Foundation to attack our country. Seriously, while the Conservatives publicly say they're against foreign meddlers and foreign money, they themselves are bankrolling the same people. There's not a lot of folks richer than the Rockefellers out there, but the Canadian government is, 
and they agreed to pay forced ethics to attack the oil sands and other anti-oil sands extremists too. I'll take you through this insane contract page by page after the break. Get your airline sickness bags ready, folks. This will make you want to wretch. Here it is, the contract by which the Canadian government agrees to pay a San Francisco-based lobby group called Forest Ethics $60,000 to attack the oil sands and to make that payment through a front group called Tides Canada. Um, isn't that exactly the money laundering for radical groups that we're trying to get rid of? Aren't we doing exactly to ourselves what the Rockefellers are doing to us? It's part of a slush fund for activists and lawyers hidden away within the Canadian Environmental Assessment Agency. As the name suggests, that's a government agency. Experts in environmental matters. They're, it's good to have them around. They look at the science and safety and economics of things like pipelines. We hire neutral people to figure that kind of stuff out. People who work for Canada, not foreign meddlers. People who have a duty to be objective and scientific. Not partisan hacks. But for some reason... Tucked away within this agency is a huge multi-million dollar budget specifically earmarked for anti-development activists. That's what it's there for, seriously, to hire lawyers to sue us, to pay the staff and benefits of our attackers. I'm just reading from their official form now, to pay their travel expenses, phone bills, even to buy them ad campaigns in the media. In the case of the Northern Gateway Pipeline alone, $600,000 of our tax money was set aside for various extremist groups. And that's just one budget. They have a separate, far bigger budget for Aboriginal opponents of the pipeline, too. Take a look at this list of applicants. The amount of money they actually requested has been blacked out in this access to information request, but not the amount granted hundreds of thousands of dollars for extremist groups. Look at that one down there. There's 10,000 bucks to our friends at the Dogwood Initiative. Remember them? They're the ones who signed up over 1,600 people to testify at the Northern Gateway Pipeline hearings with the specific goal of bogging down the process and delaying it by years. Here's their boss, Eric Swanson, saying he'd take money from anyone, and he does, to fight against Canada. Look at this. If I got duffel bags of money delivered from Martians from outer space, I would still take that money to... He would still take that money. He takes it from Americans to attack Canada. But why bother when he can take money from Peter Kent himself to, uh, to attack Peter Kent? Look at what these extremists are spending the money on. Not the money, that's too neutral. Your money, your tax money, happily handed over to them by Peter Kent's own department. Look at this. It's a breakdown of the fees that Forced Ethics is going to pay their hand-picked lobbies. Look at this. They asked for 4000 bucks for Andrew Weaver, a climate change extremist at the University of Victoria, affiliated with the United Nations. Forced Ethics proposed to pay him 4000 bucks to make a presentation. That's half a month's pay for a professor, a month's pay for a lot of other folks, just to go and bash the oil sands? See, that's how most of the anti-oil sands business works. The Rockefellers know that everyone has their price. They just didn't think that Peter Kent would be the one cutting the check and letting Force Ethics hand out the gravy. They also proposed to pay Andrew Nikiforic four grand also. I know Nikiforic. He's a reporter like me. He's not an expert. He's not a scientist. He's a commentator. He's actually a lobbyist. Seriously, he got paid by Greenpeace to write propaganda for them. He even flew with them to Scandinavia to lobby governments there to boycott the oil sands industry. But the government of Canada, through Peter Kent's department, through the Tides Canada Forest Ethics money laundering scheme, gave him $4,000 to come and give a little song and dance against the pipeline. What expertise does he bring other than his anti-Canada rage? Here's his book. Look at it here. Tar Sands, Dirty Oil. Uh, yeah, that's not science. That's propaganda. Nick of Fork doesn't even live in B.C. He's nowhere near the proposed pipeline. He lives in Calgary. He's not an economist, not a biologist, not an expert in pipes or tankers or oil, not an expert in anything other than liberating $4,000 from the government to give a verbal editorial. And Peter Kent paid him? What exactly did Forest Ethics do to get this money? How did they convince Peter Kent's department to fork over tens of thousands of dollars to them? Well, here's a copy of their one-page work plan. Seriously, that's it. That's their one-page plan that got them $60,000. You can see that some bureaucrat wrote the word Tides Canada on top of it. That's not our writing. That's someone in Peter Kent's department. That shows the money laundering trail. Let's just go through a few of these goodies here. They want money to, quote, Learn about participating in the process. Seriously. Now, the rest of us go on the Internet and read about the process of forced ethics in San Francisco. They get paid to surf the net. That's awesome. Uh, number two, engage in bi-monthly calls with lawyers and allies. Seriously, they get paid to scheme with their fellow campaigners. I, I wonder if they build for the time on the phone in New York with the Rockefeller brothers, too. 
Here's another one, quote, convene meetings to find areas for potential collaboration and leverage to maximize resources. No real human being speaks that way. That's not English. That's bureaucraties. It means going out for beers with your buddies and talking politics. But if you say it that way to Peter Kent, he won't pay you $60,000. Here's another thing in their work plan. Collaborate with other interveners. I'm not quite sure how that's different from convening meetings or conference calls or maximizing synergies. But hell, it would look pretty bad if they couldn't even fill up one page describing what they wanted the money for, right? Here's another point. Here it is again. In October, participate in bi-monthly calls. Now, they said that before, but hey, wouldn't you write that again and again if you got paid 60 grand by the Canadian government to do so? There it is again, January through March, more phone calls. No wonder they needed so much money. Here's my favorite, getting paid to attend public town hall meetings. No volunteers here. These are professionals headquartered in San Francisco. They don't do anything for free, let alone do, go to a boring Canadian meeting. And of course, just to fill up the page, more promises to make more phone calls. Seriously, this is what the Canadian Environmental Assessment Agency is paying foreign lobby groups to do, to plan and scheme and lobby and phone around against us. Not for expertise. Even if Nick Aforic, for example, was an expert, he's not. He's bought and paid for by a lobby group. He's not independent. Why are we paying one side of the argument to fight and campaign against Canada? It's not just forced ethics. One of their allies, you know, the ones they're on the phone with so much, is the Living Ocean Society. They asked for 200 grand and got a check from Kent for 91 grand. I guess that's called being conservative with our tax dollars. Okay, so what did the Living Ocean Society have to do to justify their money? Well, let's look at their application. They wanted $5,200 to do the bookkeeping for the 91 grand, seriously. And then they wanted another $6,000 on top of that 5,200 to make sure they were really exact in reporting. So let me, let me quote, ensuring the quality and exactness of their plan. And then another 2,300 bucks, get this, it's awesome, quote, related to interfacing with the Canadian Environmental Assessment Agency on requests for payment, unquote, seriously. So they have asked for 2,300 bucks to cover the costs of asking for the check. So $13,500 out of the 91 grand is just paperwork costs of asking for a check. Now, that's outrageous. If this were a real company, someone would be fired for being so wasteful or obviously padding invoices. Do you think the Rockefellers would let someone be so profligate with their money? No, but hey, our big, dumb, spendy, wasteful, conservative government cut the check. But they really, really need that money. I mean, they build $1,000 for paper and printer ink. There is no English word that is big enough for that. We have to use Yiddish. The word is chutzpah to ask for money, and then to ask for money for asking for money, and then to ask for money to print the paper on which one asked for the money to ask for the money. And Peter's Kent office cut the check. Look, I like Peter Kent, I really do. How can I not like him? Years ago when he was in the TV business, he was actually my boss. He's universally well-regarded as a gentleman.